social media? Writing. First thing that comes to mind when I think of media is definitely um, visual media. None of them. And here's why I'll say that, because technically all ways in which we send messages are mediated. So whether it's the voice or writing or through the radio, right, it's all mediated speech. And so the problem is that if you say, I trust some media, but I don't trust other media, you're essentially saying that there's a form of media that will make communication more transparent, but transparency is a myth. Uh, the media that I trust the most is probably, um, just to get the straight facts, is NPR radio because um, they're pretty unbiased. Um, other than that, you never really know what's going to be biased versus unbiased. I probably, I stick with my classic school uh, and I love newspapers. Well, I tend not to trust any media. I try to take everything with a grain of salt because, you know, you really don't know what you're getting, who's writing it, where they're getting their information. And it's best to just kind of, like I said, take everything with a grain of salt. Focusing just on the news, I mean, the biggest thing is just with that, is the news I'm getting real? Is it like altered in any way? Is it biased? Like, am I getting just the straight facts? And nowadays there's so many different news outlets, it's tough to know that. Pretty unreliable. Um, even the big name ones, the big name news sources, they, they're, they can be biased sometimes. Politically, you know, they have interests. And so what we want to believe is that there's like real communication that's true and transparent and, and you, your intentions can't be misunderstood, right? So that's why we tell people, oh, well, you should have a face-to-face -face conversation instead of having a text message conversation. But both of those cause equal problems with transparency because it's impossible to have a transparent communication or you're always going to run into problems. Something like eye-catching, uh, exaggerated, as long as that gets more attention, that becomes their primary purpose. So that's not good. the most like important issue is just the fact that there are all of these different outlets that are get, like talking about the same topics but from different angles so that you know if someone watches um, something on CNN and another person watches on Fox they could literally watch something about the exact same story and receive it in two completely different ways and that's a problem anyone kind of posting stuff out there I think we just want to pretend it's gotten worse because it allows cranky old people to be like these kids on our social media, when in fact, the real problem is just that communicating with people is hard. No form of media is going to make that better or worse. You just have to work at it, right? Email. Because no matter how hard I try to get my students not to email me, or how hard I try to get people not to send me emails, we just continue to send an email every time anybody has a thought about anything? Um, certainly social media, I'd say Twitter. I mean, I know it's probably at this point not the most effective because anyone can post stuff on Twitter, but just because of the convenience that it provides, Twitter is definitely uh, where I get the majority of my news. Uh, social media, uh, mostly Twitter. You know, all the, the big ones, Instagram, I don't really use that much, but it's there. Uh, Twitter, Snapchat, all that type of stuff. I just think it's fun. I mean, there's a lot of Aside from news, you know, it's a lot of people just you know, connected through a source, and it, I think there's a lot of funny stuff on Twitter. Guess if I had to pick an answer off the top of my head without giving this more thought, it would be that there is no such thing as your authentic self and your projected self. There's just the self that you project and practice a lot, and then the one you don't practice very often. I think certainly hurts it because it is so beneficial in the fact that it is convenient and you can reach a ton of people at any time. It kind of um, takes away the need for all of that face-to-face -face communication, which um, is a negative of it. Well, I think it connects people better, so it gives us the opportunity to communicate face-to-face -face more often, um, but I think the quality of that communication, it might, might uh, worsen it because, you know, we're so used to just typing something and that's a lot less goes into that than actually having a face-to-face -face conversation. I don't think it is. I mean, again, I think it's like, if the only media you've ever used 
is social media, it feels super new and edgy to you. Or if you never use it, it feels super new, right? But essentially, it's the theory that no matter which media or technology you're using, it's all about the anxiety of truth. Now, when radio was introduced, 1930s, or late 20s, 1930s, it was a revolutionary new media. It you know, people who they changed everything. Well, it's a field that's always changing, and it's still continuing to. Like, you know, we, we talk about how, you know, we think our uh, newspaper is going to die, uh, social media is going to, you know, overtake that, things of that nature. I, I don't know what exactly will happen. I think something like that will happen, but it's just a constant cycle of, you know, new platforms and new technologies arising, and other ones, they might stick around, they might go away. It's just a constant cycle. You never know what's going to happen.